Galatians 5.16, okay? So Galatians 5.16 says, I, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Um, okay, let's say verse 16 and 17. Okay. Galatians 5.16 and 17. And, um, okay, so this is the audience that we are actually, um, you're going to be preaching um, to the audience. And these are all retired people, right? Retired elderly folks um, who are probably in a retirement home. Okay, you, you get the picture? Okay, they are retired elderly and uh, we're going to be talking to them. So who wants to preach? Um, you're just going to take it's a short time, right? Uh, maybe two, three minutes. Anybody wants to try? Okay, uh, Anita, would you like to try? Okay, very short, maybe just one thought. Um, but this is the audience. Okay, so why don't you start? Um, I can't hear. You might have to unmute and speak. Um, okay, I can't hear Anita. Uh, Rosalind, would you like to take some time to talk talk about this? Um, so this is Galatians 5, 16 and 17. And this is the audience that you're addressing. And uh, just two minutes, just one thought. Okay, go ahead. Um, Rosalind, are you are you there? Yeah. Pastor, I'm reading the verse. So. Yeah, yeah. You but, can maybe, yeah. You can start by reading the verse out loud, and then uh, yeah. Actually, uh, the the audience is very old, and mm. they are like. So I'm just connecting, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, yeah, just start off. Just start yeah. off. Uh, start off by reading the verse, and yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so so I say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Okay. So I just would like to uh, encourage them and uh, even though they are in this um, old age or in this uh, ha um, old age home, um, I would just like to encourage them, you know, um, not to give up. And yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So you start addressing them, you know. Um, as okay, how so, you would talk to them. Okay, yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, I would just like to encourage you all um, not to give up, even though you all are at this, um, um, you know, um, be connected to the spirit. Like, the pastor, are they believers or like? Okay, let's say they are believers. <laughs> <laughs> let's um, yeah, yeah, let's say they are believers. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, You're doing so, fine. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, so there's still hope. Be connected to the spirit. Uh, be connected to the Holy Spirit, and um, um. Flesh 
That's it, Pastor. So, Sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, try again. See, the thing is this. Okay, let's let's say. Okay, now these are um, old elderly folks, right? Now the thing is, like, if we say young people, then immediately you would have jumped in and yeah, said, "Okay, <laughs> so okay, yeah, these are the work of the flesh." You know, these are yeah. the things. Um, so, so when we, when it comes to um, you know probably older folk, we are uh, no, we could think about you know if you if you look at that list, right? Uh, it talks about well, adultery, fornication, etc. But it also talks about hatred, contentions, uh, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, uh, dissensions, heresies, you know, wrong beliefs. Uh, or it also talks about envy, murder, all those things, right? So uh, there's a whole list that we can, you know, get into. And uh, typically, okay, let's say uh, if they are senior folks and uh, we can talk about anger, uh, what we talked about in the earlier class, we can talk about anger, we can talk about uh, maybe regrets sometimes, you know, like you reach a season, I mean, you reach a stage in life and, you, and you're like, wow, uh, I wish I had done that, right? And uh, it's a, it's an unhealthy pattern. Um, we're not enjoying the present, you know, you just said, I wish I had done that in my, I wish I had, things could be different, I wish. And then, you know, you're elderly and you're in a place where you're not able to do uh, do much that you need the help of others and there could be a sense of uh, low self-esteem you know uh, i was like this but now um you know and then you begin to uh because just because you're not able to do certain things you were uh, you know, you had so much of respect and honor. Probably, you know, it, it happens when people retire, when people, you know, when, when people are in service, there's so much of, they felt useful. And now they're feeling that, okay, I'm not able to contribute much, you know, so so we can address all that. Right? So it's, it's so when we say, uh, you know, that's why, you know, specifically I said, okay, it's for this audience because um, it'll help us think, okay, we can talk about all that. Okay, what is, um, you know, uh, an old person going through and uh, for us to be sensitive to that. And the fact that when you walk in the spirit, you're not giving in to, you know, depression. Like you're not giving in to low self-esteem. You're not giving in to, you know, all those kinds of regrets and all those thought patterns. Because, you know, if, if you look at it, it's not just um, an act that the spirit of God empowers us to, um, I, I, uh, prevents us from doing, but it's also motives, imaginations, thoughts of the heart, etc. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, Rosa, so good, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah, those are some things that you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah really so, Thank you. Yeah. It was tricky, but it's it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Um, okay, here's another, you know, here's another verse. Let's say, um, uh, let, let's stick on to same uh, Galatians, but this time let's look at Galatians 5 and verse 1. Okay, Galatians 5 and verse 1. And uh, so let's say our audience um our children okay in the age group um let's say eight to ten years old okay so jeffina you've been teaching children right okay then then i think you should start <laughs> okay so let's uh why don't you try okay galatians 5 1 Okay, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Okay, and you're you're addressing eight-year-olds, ten-year-olds. So, what would you uh, talk to them about? Okay, take a minute to think about it. Uh, maybe you can just read through that verse again. And um, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah. I'm taking a minute to read it. <laughs> Galatians, so they are small children, eight to ten. Oh. That's right, eight to ten. So they're not teenagers. They are, yeah. you know, um, they got some more years to go. Yeah. 
So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that we stay free. Children. I'm thinking faster how to start. I never done it, children. <laughs> Yes, I think I've got it. <laughs> okay. So I have to give all the introductions and start, like how I do it from the start thing and everything. I, I mean, you, I, yeah, you, you have the freedom. Just go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I'm truly set free in Christ now. <laughs> yeah. So, so if it's like 8 to 10, I'll just tell them. Hey guys, how are you doing? And uh, I hope you all are doing good. And today uh, we've got to learn a scripture and it's going to be in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. And it says, Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. So this morning, I just want all of you to know that you are free in Christ. There is nothing that is holding you back. Uh, there may be a lot of things that happened at school this week. Uh, there may be a lot of things that happened with your parents. And yeah, some of you may have cried sometimes over these days. But I just want you to know that Christ loves you so much. And he has set you free from everything. And so this is a new day and you're going to have some new happiness and you're just going to enjoy your day with Christ today. So he set you free. That's it. That's the truth. And don't think about what happened all over this week. You're going to keep your eyes on God today. You're going to keep your eyes on his love today. And you're just going to enjoy because he set you free from everything. Everything that you did, everything that hurted you. Let us all leave that behind and just focus on God. Yeah. Thank you. The end. <laughs> nice. Uh, nice, Jeffina. So the thing is, uh, like what you, you know, the way, the way you approached it, it's really, um, you know, it will get their attention because they, um, uh, I mean, they want someone to be friendly. They want someone to be enthusiastic, uh, and they will they will listen. Um, so, uh, just one thing is, you can talk about um, what really you know what bondage is, and what uh, that we what is it that we do that leads us into bondage. You know, talking about sin, um, talking about the things that uh, that God does not want us to do, and there's a reason why He does not want us to do, and you know, you can talk about that. And the fact that he has set us free, and you can talk about the cross and how he set us free, yeah. uh, and and the fact that you are free, um, um, and yeah, yeah. I think what you said is you know don't go back to it, don't think about it is is good. Um, yeah. So we so the, here we can actually ask them a lot of questions, right? That's yeah. all, also another thing, and also uh, asking them to repeat. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Repeat after me. Okay. Let's learn this verse. Um, so those are things which uh, you know, which which really opens up, uh, gets the attention. Uh, so th those are some things that you can do. Right. Good. Right. I will learn. How to yeah. Go for it. So next Sunday you can try it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, once more. Uh, one more, maybe, and then. Um, okay. Okay, so uh, this is for. I'm just uh, just give me a minute. Okay. 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 So we're looking at uh, Galatians three. Okay. Um, and uh, verse twenty six. So. So Galatians 3 and uh, verses 26 and 27. 27. So uh, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For so as many as you, uh, of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay, so, so we are addressing 
um, uh, we are addressing a group of people uh, or audience who you know who either have single parents okay so audience is uh, like maybe they have single parents or you know maybe they are orphans they do not have uh, parents right so um, so we need to be a little sensitive we're talking about this and uh, okay but it's a very encouraging message right you're all you know it's talking about talking about identity and all that okay so who wants to do this um anyone um anyone leah lama would you like to try okay so the age group um well i would say probably you know like teens or um uh, yeah, late teens, right? Um, late teens, right? Okay, let's say so these are not early teens, but late teens, eighteen, nineteen, you know, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. Okay. So, Leah Lama, would you like to try? Um, anyone else? Abu Bakr, would you like to try? Take about two, three minutes, talk about it. Um, okay, otherwise, I'm coming to uh, who's uh, who's next? Uh, Ruben, come on. Would you like to try? So Galatians 3, 26, 27. And we're talking to late teens. And uh, yeah. So uh, late teens who are, you know, probably have single parents or orphans. They don't have parents. Um, so we're talking to them about this, uh, this truth. Right. Um, okay. Ruben, Thamar. John, suddenly my sights are on you, John. Please. <laughs> Sir, it is, this comes again, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, go for it. I'm just taking the scripture bus one second. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. No worries. No worries. I did not know that this would, this would come again. <laughs> I know, I know. It comes the second round, no? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Uh, all right. <clears throat> So greetings to all of you. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to us this morning. Um, so I just want to encourage each one of us from the word of God. Galatians 3.26, we read, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. There are even times in our lives when we think, who is there for me? Who is there to care for me? My friends, they have parents my friends, they have uh, people to take care of. And I feel loneliness, you might say like that, in your lifetime. But this is a word of encouragement for each one of us from God's word. Galatians 3.26, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. God has called you as, your, uh, as his son, as his daughter, just by faith in Christ Jesus. He has taken you to be his family. What a privilege that we have, that we are part of God's family. God who created everything, the God who sustains everything by his hand. He is calling you. Now, in the natural, you might feel lonely. In the natural, you might feel you're orphan. But don't worry, you have a heavenly father who loves you so much. And verse 27, we read, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, which means you carry God's image. You carry God's image. 
even even when you feel lonely even when you feel tired remember you are baptized into christ and have put on christ you carry the image of god god has called you he has chosen you from the foundation of the world and he has adopted let me preach uh he he has called you to be his son to be his daughter and to carry his glory stay encouraged god bless you pastor amen come on john <laughs> that is good you really got into it i think uh, you didn't want to stop i think no <laughs> yeah check it out see sorry oh, see. <laughs> <laughs> that is good that is good really good thank you yeah uh, i i i thought uh, i detected you know that living supernaturally kind of uh, intro greetings <laughs> we are glad that you could be here <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah that is nice uh, Yeah. Oh, Jeffina wants to try. Okay. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Jeffina. Same verse, no? Huh? Or you you want to try some other verse? Oh, whatever is fine. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. I'll give you another verse. Okay. Uh, which is um, Galatians one. Okay. So this is a tough audience, uh, Jeffina. Galatians one. and we are looking at um verses 6 and 7 okay galatians 1 6 and 7 and um you're talking to a group of pastors who are older than you <laughs> okay just imagine the scene you know fresh out of bible college and <laughs> and you get an opportunity to meet with these pastors who are seasoned and who are i mean i know that is not the original context of the verse but this is what it is okay so he says so this is the verse let me read it out i marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of christ to a different gospel which is not another but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of christ we know that you know it was actually addressed to um well not so mature believers people who were actually uh, to whom he had uh, you know shared the gospel and thing uh, they were moving to a gospel of works right so but anyway over to you so you can uh, so don't let the pastors thing you know kind of put you down so just focus on the verse and uh, yeah um so i'm just uh, explaining this verse to the pastors or am yeah yeah so the pastors are there and then uh, you just yeah. think about it they have been you know serving for many years and something has happened obviously which has kind of led them you know which is why god has put this verse in your heart oh and, my <laughs> and he wants you you know so they're listening to you and then yeah go ahead go ahead okay I think I asked the wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. Go ahead. Okay. Wow, after this. Okay. So you can Good start morning. by saying, you know, uh, you yeah, you can start by saying, you know, um, like how uh, it's a privilege to be talking to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're, you're, you know, about about, about their call. You're, you're, you are. you know you're in awe of all that they've done you are uh, i mean grateful for what god is doing through their lives and all that and then go to it yeah okay yeah so a uh, good morning to everyone who has gathered here in the name of our lord jesus christ uh, it's such a privilege for me to stand here in front of you and to share the word of god with all of you uh, i stand in awe of uh, each and every one of your ministries the way uh, you pastors are working toward god and for his kingdom the way you are chasing the lost souls and you are uh, getting them into the christ uh, so i'm so happy to be here i'm so honored to be here i thank god for this opportunity and today i just want to tell uh, a little verse to you 
uh, I believe that it will encourage you to do the ministry of God much more powerfully. So I just want all of you to turn to Gal Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I'm shocked that you are turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but it's not the good news at all. You're being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. So I'm shocked and I'm sure you are shocked by me choosing this verse to preach in front of all of you. But I just want you to know that the world is uh, changing a lot these days. Uh, technologies are developed and uh, uh, we people are so mature and people are falling away so soon. God just put this verse in my heart to tell all of you that God has called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. And he just don't want you to turn away from these things. There are many things happening on this world. And he calls you. I hope you all remember the day when you came into Christ, when you got that calling from God and you felt like, okay, this is what I want to do for God. Okay, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to go out, preach to the teens, preach to the elderly people, preach to the brokenhearted. And I just want you all to not to distract from this. Remember the first day that God called you, the first day when you were at his feet, the first day when you finally realized that this is my calling and this is what I want to do in my life. Never get distracted from it. There are many things happening in this world. False teachers are arising. And Satan, he's mightily working against God. And I just want all of you to stay in Christ and to work mightily for his kingdom as you did on the first day. Let that fire that was enlightened by God on the first day, let it keep burning. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted by anything. Always get back into the word. Always get back into Christ. Always, when you feel confused, when you feel like, what is happening just go back to christ this good news that you have god is not changing god is good all the time and all the time god is good and he called you he chose you just keep preaching at this early days of my life god has called me and i believe that i will do this ministry great for god till the end of my life and i'm so happy for each and everything that you pastors are doing and i'm just here encouraging you to remember the day when God calls you and just keep holding on to the truth. God bless you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey. It was good. So oh, you switched off the camera also. <laughs> uh, no, that was good. That was good. Um, yeah. So here, no, um, I, I, and as you were, as you were, uh, you know, it, it is a good thing that you were uh, going back to how when they started the the purity the authenticity of it all you know and the sincerity with which you know most um, people start off and something happens uh, midway right so that's the kind of situation um so it is good to ask questions you know in the sense uh, rhetoric right what what are rhetoric uh, when you say rhetoric you know these are uh, questions and you're not uh, really expecting an answer these are questions that uh, more like statements you know so what is the kind of gospel that we are preaching today you know has anything changed since that time um, are we staying true to the word of god you know uh, uh, or is there something that has changed and and like right like you rightly said you know talking about media you know and so many things that have come come up and so you know to to really test and to see to discern uh what we are preaching because what we are preaching has far reaching consequences especially as pastors right so you can say okay um, hey, you are influencers you know you are there a lot of lives are connected uh, people um, and so the, the greater the responsibility to be careful about what we're preaching because we're preaching um right preaching means leads to right believing leads to life right living and the opposite is all true, right? So you could talk about that, but it is good. Yeah, just that that one. I think that one main thing of taking back to what you believed in earlier, that's a big thing. Awesome. Okay, super. Let's. Uh, okay, so let's look at um, where we picked, uh, where we where we dropped off. So you know, let, let's get into this this whole habit of um, you know. Uh, 
when we have a couple of verses and maybe less time is just to you know get into that whole thing of expressing these thoughts so you you know these thoughts these are there already um but just to be able to express them to voice them and um, yeah and sometimes yeah i know that language could be a challenge maybe that's why you know some people some of you kept quiet uh, maybe you didn't want to take up a thing but but give it a try you know it, it could be just one it's just us you know in the classroom so um it's just one thought maybe two thoughts uh, you could just express that in the, in the simplest of way possible like you know you may not express it the way jeffina does or you know jeffina may not be able to express the way john does or you know the way rosalind does so so that's fine absolutely okay you know uh, you might do it in a very very simple way you might do it in a very complex way that's fine absolutely fine but uh, i think it's important that we you know begin to uh, begin to express begin to preach begin to share right um, and try it out okay so yeah so last class we we were looking at um, uh, some of the keys for effective preaching and we looked at um, how we should never disqualify ourselves right as a as a, or the content that we are preaching okay um, so uh, that's a very big important thing because normally we kind of disqualify ourselves at the big, very beginning of the message itself okay and that sets a very uh, sets us on the defensive uh, and um, it it doesn't really give us any momentum um, and uh, sometimes it just quenches the attention of the people you know they to uh, they though they may not verbalize it they begin to the audience begins to ask then why should i listen <laughs> you know uh, why should i you know uh, spend this time why should i listen so so don't dis discount uh, the other bigger picture is that god does not discount you right uh, in fact the lord has uh, orchestrated things he has given us um, given the platform and the opportunity uh, because he thinks uh, he, uh, you know he it is, it is something important the message is worth preaching so don't discount yourself as a person um you know saying that uh, it's because of my inexperience and you know don't apologize for anything right just go ahead at the same time don't be arrogant also um just be in that place of humility and share okay um okay the next thing that we are going to look at is um uh, something that we need to avoid as we as we speak as we preach um being mindful of the audience is to avoid certain christian jargon you know especially if it is a non christian audience um we are so used to using christian jargon you know in in, in terms of uh, like we say uh, hallelujah question mark you know and the response is hallelujah or praise the lord question mark or amen question mark uh, right and the response is amen exclamatory mark hallelujah exclamatory mark praise the lord exclamatory mark right so uh, so the thing is um, to avoid those jargons to avoid that when we are addressing uh, and it sometimes it could be a mixed crowd also like even in a church congregation we have uh, you know believers we have um, others who are not believers and so um so to be mindful of that and especially if it's a you know like a special sunday and you've uh, invited uh, or given out invitation for others uh, who do not normally go to church who are from you know other uh, faith and so be mindful be sensitive okay don't uh, use these uh, christianese terms you know we, um and, and you know right these are terms that uh, uh, we can actually explain it then it will be better right if we explain the term instead of using that term uh, then it'll be better. Okay. Um, the other thing is, um, there's no if there is no requirement to look at a particular verse, uh, do not ask everybody to turn to it. Okay. Or um, if uh, if if you if you can paraphrase it, paraphrase it and just move on. Um, however if you want people to actually look at a particular verse and read it give them enough time okay? give them time um, you've stated a verse and you want them to read it you want them to go through it give them enough time to uh, read through turn to that place uh, read read it. and if there are uh, people who do not know you know where uh, 
again depends on the audience where the particular book is and where that uh, particular portion is you can always guide them okay it is before this or it is after this uh, after this book and um, you know some churches have pew bibles in the sense uh, like you know uh, some of these mainline churches have the bibles which are there where you can even uh, quote the page number right you know and that is helpful you can say okay it is found in page number this on your pew bibles so yeah Amen can be used in regular Sundays. Yes, of course. Um, uh, I think that's uh, that's a good way to uh, engage the uh, congregation. You know, you're just saying, so be it. And I remember once, um, I think it was in uh, in one of the campuses. I think it was in Baldwin's, Baldwin Girls, where we went and we had a program. So, um, so it was... Uh, Becky, who was uh, you remember Becky John Becky from Uganda, right? So, yes, so Becky, uh, so Becky was um, actually addressing the students, and then she said "Amen, uh, Amen," and then uh, everybody was uh, silent, and then she went on to explain what "Amen" is. Uh, it just means uh, you know, so be it, and you're agreeing. And then, uh, and then she again said, you know, so amen. And then everybody said amen. Uh, so though it was a mixed uh, crowd, so something like that. But yeah, amen definitely is okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so if we are using certain terms, you know, I, I think we can. It depends on the message, depends on the sermon, uh, and we can be a little more sensitive. Uh, and, and even when we are talking about okay, born again or justification. Uh, consecration, consecrate your lives. Now, for a Christian, words like consecrate we use, right? Uh, and uh, anointing. Um, I remember once uh, there was a, a person, a very new believer who had come, and she had asked, uh, uh, you know, he, she was not married at the time, she was, she was engaged. So she asked her fiance who brought her to church, you know, why are these people lifting their hands, right? Why are they lifting their hands and singing? For her, it was like uh, a foreign thing. You know, for us, it's it's uh, it's it's been part and parcel of Christian life. You know, we just lift our hands and sing. So for her, it was something new. Uh, and and for some people, it could be like you know, why is everybody singing? Uh, that could also be a you know, a completely different thing, right? So to be mindful of all this, uh, depending on the audience. You know, we don't have to really be paranoid about it. But then to to be mindful. Uh, at least in our messages, uh, to think about okay, what terms are we using? You know, when we use words like consecration, justification, salvation, born again, anointed, um, uh, to be mindful of that, right? And it will always be helpful, right? Um, the other thing is also to um, when we are coming down strong on things to avoid, things not to do, um, you know. Uh, well, we we need to kind of give explain the context, give the context again, and also talk about the grace of God. Okay, like uh, um, especially when we are addressing biblical uh, standards, biblical uh, ethics, uh, values, right? So, which goes beyond what the world would uh, talk about, right? Over and above. So, um, so. While we do that, you know, we uh, not sound legalistic, but at the same time, we need to address those things. So uh, be mindful of that, right? Um, so what is our priority? You know, we, uh, okay, if it's, uh, let's say we have some people who are wearing bindi in the congregation, you know, bindi talking about the, you know, uh, uh, the mark on the forehead. Well, uh, are you going to jump in and, you know, uh, completely address that, or are you going to talk about, uh, you know, God's love for that person, uh, God's grace, which covers, uh, you know, so the person may not even consider that as a as a rich uh, as a religious affiliation. Uh, for them, it's it could be a cosmetic thing also, you know. So depending on what they're coming from background, but then uh, you know, at the outset, publicly, when you're talking about it. Are you going to address that, or are you going to? Are we going to talk about the love of God and the grace of God? Uh, so, so it's a fine line. Okay. Um, so, be mindful of that. Okay. So, any questions on this? Um, 
so basically we are talking about uh, you know culture um you know addressing culture addressing religious customs um uh, when you com compare that or contrast that with uh, biblical culture uh, which transcends all culture of course and we are talking about the truth okay so in a country like india where culture is so intertwined with religious belief okay its uh, tradition is so intertwined with religious belief and uh, where things need to be addressed of course um, but you know picking the time and picking the opportunity to address that and also what would you do publicly and what would you do in a maybe a personal setting um, that also is something right so these would um, uh, this would really greatly help while addressing the congregation. Okay. 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 The other thing is to avoid verbal fat. Okay. So what does that mean? That means to avoid a co a redundancy in the sense you're using two, three statements to talk about the same thing, addressing the same truth. Um, so which is actually redundant. You know, this is, you're repeating it, but you're saying it in different ways, uh, using different. So it just fills up that space, uh, fills up that. Um, so it's like uh, you're using different words. You know, some 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 words like basically, um, uh, basically, or uh, what is the other thing? Uh, uh, generally, generally speaking, basically, you know, some words. I know sometimes we we use those and it's helpful um, to communicate, but if it is just to add on to uh, and and if it is redundant, you know, if it can be avoided, we can avoid it. So it's a verbal fact, uh, and also um, again, this this we can think about it, uh, like uh, how did you receive the message? Okay, I went to bed and I was praying, Lord, give me a word. And then I had a dream. And in that dream, I had this scripture pop up. And, uh, you know, and I went and looked at it. Uh, and this is what, you know, so we, it, it depends. Okay, so do you want to do that? Or do you want to cut to the chase and talk about, you know, every time if you're going to share and you're going to share it, how you receive the message, um, it's unnecessary. Right, God is speaking to you in different ways, and you know, and you've received the message. So just share the message rather than talk about the process of how you arrived at it. Okay, so um, so that's uh, so those are you know things that we can actually cut out of our message time now, unless it's absolutely important for the content. You know, it's important for the audience to hear. It's going to it's going to bless them in some way. It's connected with what you're sharing. Right. For example, if you're going to be talking about the prophetic, or if you're talking about uh, maybe let's say dreams and and connected with the prophetic, and uh, the way in which this particular message, um, God, the way in which God gave you that message, right? So it's it's definitely connected. Now, in the prophetic or or hearing the voice of God, um, it's going to help the audience connect with the message even further, even more. Right. So you're you're helping them um, uh, say you're helping them discover. Okay, this is how God. This is this is also one way by God speaks the way God speaks, and and this is how He spoke to me. So you be you can be open, and it's connected with the title. It's connected with the subject, so it will help. Right. Um, but if you're going to be talking about something else, and you're talking about how you receive the message, it doesn't really help. Right. So that is what we mean. Okay. Um, so. So we don't have to talk about the process, okay? And also other things is, you know, sometimes we make that uh, mistake. So we're here, uh, we're just talking about um, several things, uh, and we say, okay, let me illustrate that point, or we say, okay, um, uh, let me give you an example, or so we don't have to use that. Okay, and uh, an illustration of for this would be, uh, we don't have to say that. Right? We don't have to say it's an illustration. We don't have to say an example. You just dive right in and uh, give that example you know just uh, jump, just jump right in and give that illustration uh, which would be far more impactful uh, rather than 
prefacing that example by saying this is an example or prefacing that illustration by saying it is a here's an illustration uh, we don't have to do that right um so what happens if we if we blank out or if we missed out some things you know this happens sometimes when you're tired maybe you're um, maybe you were preoccupied with something else or something some something happened in the you know and then we we blanked out we um, uh, we kind of lost the thread okay the, where was i now um, you know one thing is to make light of the situation so you know you can just ask, ask the audience okay uh, you know uh, can you just help me what where was i and they'll be helpful and say okay you were talking about this and then you can go back uh but if you want to just move on to the next point you can you can move on to the next point also right uh, so um so that is absolutely okay okay so sometimes we make those mistakes and it's fine okay um okay um the thing is uh, okay certain uh, messages certain or certain um uh scenarios in which we uh, the context in which we share the messages it could be maybe a workshop it could be maybe a you know an extended teaching time uh, where we are opening up the time for the audience to ask questions okay so in such a workshop or a, a seminar you know kind of a or a retreat kind of a you know those kind of scenarios when the people are asking questions here are some things right to keep in mind okay so give appropriate responses to questions okay so don't beat about the bush right uh, first of all be alert okay so so you get the right question okay i mean you get the you understand the question in the, in the way it was asked so it's good to even repeat that question and ask them you know, is this your question you know because the person who's asking the question might ask in a very jumbled way Okay, so or um, may not communicate that question, ask that question in a very clear yeah. manner. So it's it's good if it comes comes in bits and pieces. It's good if we can piece it together and ask, oh, is this your question? And when the person says yes, proceed to answer, um, and answer in a you know direct, succinct manner, so that it satisfies the hearer's uh, you know questions. Okay, so we'll stop here. We'll continue uh, next class with some more. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just wanted to um, again encourage us when we have these times of uh, preaching, you know, don't worry, just go ahead, share uh, from uh, it doesn't matter if it's just one thought, one line, but let's get into the habit of uh, you know expressing verbally you know, all these things, uh, these thoughts, right? Okay, okay, we'll stop here. God bless, take care. Thank you, Jafina. God bless. Bye-bye.